Hey, what's up guys? I'm Tommy and welcome to Tommy Tech Outdoors. Today I'm going to show you some crab trap options for crabbing, so stay tuned. So if you're new to my channel you like fishing, crabbing, kayaking, boating, or just spending quality time with family and friends outdoors, consider subscribing to my channel by clicking that red subscribe button below and click that notification bell so you know when I upload a new video. Alright guys, so today I'm going to show you the different crab traps that I've personally used for crabbing here in Maryland. So just make sure you check your um, local laws and regulations to determine whether or not these types of traps are actually legal wherever you're going to be using them in. Because Maryland has some different regulations where it's got to be a certain size, um, the footprint of it has to be a certain size in order for you to use it as a recreational crabber. Because um, we can't actually use like those big ones that commercial crabbers use unless we have um, a waterfront property and I think you're only allowed to. Um, don't quote me on that but just make sure you check your uh, regulations to make sure that you are uh, compliant. So and one other thing to mention about these traps is you could use them uh, pretty much anywhere. You can use it on a boat dock, on a pier, on a kayak, a boat. Um, you could even use some from shore if you can throw them out uh, correctly. But uh, you know the only difference would be that you would have to you know just change the length of string that you have on it. Um, I typically have like on my traps, it's anywhere between 12 to 15 feet. I don't crab any deeper than that. Um, if I do, um, I could um, change out, you know, the length of line. So just uh, keep that in mind. So you can use it, you know, pretty much anywhere. Um, and again, all of these are traps that I've used personally, and I've actually caught crabs out of them. There's a whole bunch of other ones that you could use, but these are just ones that I've personally used myself. All right, so the first crab trap I'm gonna show you is a ring crab trap. Uh, this one is made out of um, cotton string. Uh, you can also get these in a wire mesh as well. Um, they're a little bit more expensive than the cotton ones. I think this one was like five bucks. You can get these pretty much anywhere, all the local tackle shops, uh, Walmart, Dick's Sporting Goods, Amazon or whatever. Yeah, but I think this was like five bucks, so. Um, it's unrigged though, so you just get the trap itself. So you're gonna, still gonna have to get, you know, um, some rope and then a, you know, a float. Um, so the way this works is um, there's a big ring here on the top and then a smaller one on the bottom. So you're gonna put your bait down here on the bottom. So when the trap drops, it's just gonna go to the bottom just like that. And then uh, crab will come in, feed, and then when you pick it up, the sides come up, and then because of the force of um, pulling the trap up, it'll keep the crab on the bottom. So that's the one key to when you are actually uh, crabbing with these is that you got to make sure you keep that constant pressure when you're or tension as you're you know bringing up the uh, the line, so it'll force the crab on the bottom. Because actually, when you have them and you bring it up to the surface, they can actually still crawl out of the um, these ring nets. Um, I've actually seen that happen quite a bit, especially with the wire ones, because the wire ones are stiff, so they can actually really walk out of them. But with this uh, caught one, it's a little bit harder for them to um, crawl out of. So um, just keep that in mind. Uh, I will actually probably do another video. I'll show you guys how I'm gonna rig these, because I just got these, because I haven't used them in a long time and I actually want to try them from the kayak because it would save a lot more space. So that's one great thing with these ring traps is that they may not be as durable because of the cotton and then this um, these rings are not as sturdy. But you know, you know, for you know the space that you save, especially if you're going to try to use them on a kayak, is a lot. I mean, because look how flat this thing gets, and you could just stack a whole bunch of them up. Um, yeah, it's not like this big box one, which I'll show you actually this one next. But yeah, so that is the ring trap for crabbing that I uh, typically like to use. All right, so moving on to the next trap that I've used. Um, this is actually probably the first traps that I bought actually um, when I started to crab from you know 
a boat, you know, John Boat's canoe. Um, and it's just a simple box trap that has four doors on it. So when you're using it, uh, you can see it's actually made of um, galvanized, uh, galvanized wire. Um, and actually, you can see here, you have to do some maintenance on this one because the doors don't open properly because of the hog rings. There's actually hog rings here. These are actually rusting out, actually. I gotta change them. Um, maybe I'll do a video about that, too. You can actually buy hog rings at your local tackle shop. But um, anyway, so I'm getting off topic. But this is galvanized box trap. These are actually perfect for kids. You know, little kids that, um, you know, you just wanna take them crabbing to, you know, catch a couple. Um, and it's easier for them because they're pretty light. Uh, when you pull them up, uh, it doesn't have as much resistance as like I have this giant, um, not giant, but this big topless trap, which I'll show you later. But anyways, the nice thing with this trap, because it has the four doors, you know, there's a lot of, um, space for the crabs to come in. They could come in either doors. Uh, and then you put your bait in. And then once you pull the the rope up, all the doors are shut. So there's really no chance at all of the crab getting away. Um, again, the key thing is to make sure you keep tension on that line and constantly pull and keep tension. Because if you don't, you can let one of these, like if you dropped it, one of these doors could uh, pop open really quick and they could possibly escape. But a lot of the times they don't. Um, but, you know, um, you actually see me use this with my kids uh, in a future video. But yeah, I highly recommend these if you're gonna be crabbing, you know, with kids, just because of the, uh, you know, the chances of the crabs escaping is um, lesser and you don't have to, uh, get all um, ticked off when they start losing crabs, like in the ring trap. Like I wouldn't let them bring up the ring trap, you know, unless, you know, you've taught them correctly. Um, maybe when they're a little bit older, but. So this is the box trap that I like to use for grabbing. So the next trap I'm gonna show you, I have two different versions of it. Uh, these are actually probably my favorite ones to use. Uh, these are actually topless traps. As you can see here, there is no top to it at all. Um, you can see I have a smaller one and then this bigger one. This is called, I think, a Bigfoot. I got this from stackablecrabtraps.com. I'll provide a link in the description to everything I use in this video, so you can uh, check those out. But, of course, the first ones that I got were these um, topless ones here. Um, so I'll show you this big one a little bit later. But so the nice things with these topless traps are that... Um, you can stack them and they stack really nice um, and you know they're gonna last you a long time this is galvanized so the way the topless trap works is just like that four um, box, four door box trap just let go and everything's open of course there's nothing on the top so again like I said for all the traps is when you pull it up Make sure you maintain the tension on the line so that you know the the door stays shut. Um, the one thing with these topless traps, though, is I've actually had monster crabs get out of these things because you know they're so big. I mean, you know, you have sometimes you'll have crabs like they're huge. You know, they're like that big. So as you're pulling it up, because you have this, um, it, there's nothing on the top. Um, they've actually been able to like come up out of it, you know, like this. Um, it doesn't happen all the time, but you know, it has happened. And when you see a big crab like that get away, you know, that's um, um, heart wrenching. So, but again, this is my favorite one. The reason, another reason being is just, you know, it's gonna last you a long time. Um, and the fact that you can also stack them. Just like that. Actually, let me get a stack real quick so you can see what it looks like. So just bear with me a second. All right, guys, so now I've got six topless traps here and then six of the uh, box traps, just to give you a perspective of 
the space you kind of save. Um, so this is six topless traps, and you can see it, you know, they stack right into one another um, nicely. So they're just slides right down just like that. Whereas the topless ones, I'm sorry, the topless, the uh, box ones, you kind of have to just put them on top of each other. And it's not very secure, as you can see, like this will fall down um, if it moves a lot. Whereas if you got your stack, your topless ones, um, they're in here pretty secure. Yeah, so if you have like a smaller vessel, like a kayak or canoe, this would be probably more ideal because um, you won't lose you know, one just popping off or, you know, obviously you'd bungee them down, but you can see it's not as stable as, you know, like having these topless traps. Um, so um, I prefer topless whenever I'm, you know, gonna be crabbing with, um, you know, friends. Uh, you know, the kids could probably do it as well. Um, we'll find out later um, as I'll take my kids out crabbing. And then also the box, like I said before, these box traps are great for kids just because it's simple. Keep that tension and the crab will be in there if it is in there. So um, stay tuned for some videos where I crab with the kids, so I'll show you that. And we'll see you know, if it really does make that much of a difference. All right, so here's the uh, bigger topless trap that I was talking about. Um, this is made by Stackable Crab Traps. So this actually utilizes the full um, footprint that you can legally use in Maryland um, because like I said it's got to be a, a certain size um, like I think it's 12 inches in there I forget but it's just bigger um, as you can see here I've got the topless trap I mean it really um, it's almost an inch on each side that it's bigger but what that allows you to have is just down here now um, you know I could put you can see I have a couple of bait holders here uh, so you know you could put more bait in here maybe attract more crabs um, I'm gonna do some experimentation this year you know with between using clams chicken eggs uh, bunker um, bull lips whatever you know I'm gonna see if crabs have a preference maybe they do maybe they don't I don't know but um, yeah so stay tuned for a video future video on that but the nice thing with these uh, bigger traps again, it's just the footprint on the bottom so you can put more baits. Um, it'll catch crabs just like, you know, the smaller one just, you know, it's got a bigger footprint. Uh, I only have a few of them because uh, I don't use traps as often, but now I kind of have to because I'm going to be taking the kids uh, crabbing more. Uh, eventually I'll get the kids on the line too, but um, you can probably get quite frustrated with the kids missing so many crabs on the line, but that will be happening in the future. Um, yeah, I see, I'll take my son out maybe, you know, on the canoe and do that. But um, anyway, I was getting off topic again. So here's the bigger topless trap. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the uh, last trap that I've uh, used personally. All right, so I'm gonna show you the uh, last trap that I use personally, I don't know if you can buy this anymore, but I thought I would show it just because it's kind of interesting. Um, I bought this, this trap has got to be over 20 years old, I don't know. But um, I bought this actually when I really started to first crab from a, a canoe. That's actually my first crabbing vessel I had was actually a canoe and then now I have another one again. But um, this is actually a collapsible trap and so you can see it's uh, it's like a dome. I guess it's called, yeah, I guess a dome trap. And it's collapsible. Um, so the way it works is it's got these little hooks here. And you can see how it sits flat. And then all I gotta do is take this. And then uh, now it's a little dome, as you can see here. And then it's got only two doors, but you know, Oh, I got it caught over here. You gotta make sure you don't get it caught. So anyway, so now if you pull it closed, uh, the crab will be in there. Uh, the, the only thing uh, I've actually seen, this actually happened, it's a big gimme. Uh, he actually, you know, I had my chicken or whatever in here. He actually reached through, because their claws are like really long, 
reached through inside, you know, from the outside to the inside, and it was actually eating that way. Um, but lucky, luckily, um, like I said, again, make sure you keep that tension. By keeping that tension, um, he was stuck in there as I pulled it up from the force of the water. And uh, his claws were like right there. And then he just pulled them out. I had to make sure I stepped on him real quick to, to grab him. So that's only one drawback with this trap. Um, I have no idea if you'll be able to find these anymore. But I just like the fact that, you know, it it folds down flat and it stores really nicely. So here, let me do that now. Just fold the doors down. And then you just wrap this all the way around. And I just take the flute, put it in. Look, look how flat, I mean, it's no space used at all. This would be great for a kayak if you could find these. Um, if I do, maybe I'll let you, I'll let you guys know, you know where I found them, you know, if you're interested in them. But I've looked and I don't, I haven't seen these around anywhere. Well, at least not in the last couple of years, but um, so, that's uh, one of the last traps I like to use, but again, you can't find it, or I haven't seen it anywhere. But um, you know, there's a ton of different types of traps you can use. There's even the other collapsible box type traps that you could get. Um, but I don't like the collapsible just because they're actually really tall um, if you don't collapse them. And then also just if you do want to collapse them, it's just the extra effort that you have to do um, to, um, to collapse them because if you're allowed 30 traps in Maryland so it just be too much work to do that um, these topless traps are probably the most convenient ones the uh, cost-effective ones would be you know like the ring traps the box traps would be great for um, you know taking kids out but um, again this is all just my personal preference opinion uh, so you know if you guys have any comments or questions about any of the traps I use or you know how to go crabbing in Maryland because I am going to be doing that a lot this year. Um, you know, just let me know in the uh, comment section below. So make sure you guys stay tuned because I'm going to have a future video coming up showing you the different bait holder options I use for attaching baits to my crab traps. Um, there's so many different ways you could do it, but I'm going to show you the ways that I prefer to um, do that. Um, like right here, I've got the snap bait, the clam bag. Um, I'll show you guys a little bit more about this as well. Um, so make sure you uh, stay tuned for those future videos. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, make sure you subscribe for future videos. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.